Hello and welcome to Water Quality. In this video I'm going to go over how to solve the pH of a weak acid solution and in this video I'm going to go over how to do it graphically rather than using an analytical approach. So first of all in this example we have acetic acid which is a weak acid and we have 10 to the minus 3 moles being added to a liter of deionized water and we want to find the pH of that solution. So first of all I'm going to write out my reactions and the first reaction I'll write out is the weak acid reaction for acetic acid where acetic acid donates a proton and forms acetate. The whole point of a weak acid is that it doesn't completely dissociate in, in a solution so that you have both the acid form and the base form present. And this partitioning between the acid and base forms is described by the equilibrium constant that we call K and we use a subscript A to denote that it's an acid. And the Ka for acetic acid is 10 to the minus 4.7 which means that it has a pKa value of 4.7. The next reaction I'm going to write out is for water because this is an aqueous solution and water is also a weak acid because it can dissociate and you have both the reactants and the products present. And we'll describe this equilibrium constant as k sub w and the value is 10 to the minus 14. Okay so now we're using a graphing, graphical solution so it's going to look a little bit different than the previous video where I showed the analytical solution and so instead of writing out the mass balance and the charge balance we're going to use the proton condition and to use the proton condition first you need to write out the proton reference level. And the proton reference level is what you start with in the solution. So it's always what you start with and because this is water chemistry, water quality, we always start with water. So that's always going to be in your PRL. And the other thing uh, is what you add to the solution or, or your starting point before any of the proton exchange happens. And in this case, our proton reference level, or what we add, is acetic acid. So a lot of people get confused about the proton condition. And a good way to think about it is that it's a mass balance. But instead of being on mass, it's on protons. And to understand the proton condition, I like to write out a little schematic. So I write my proton reference level, and I put them in a little circle like this. And then what I do is above the circles, I add what the chemical would be if a proton were added. So if a proton were added to water, it would be H3O+, plus, which is essentially our hydrogen ion. So it's just hydrogen ion attached to a, a water molecule. If I take a hydrogen away from water, it becomes hydroxide. Now I can't add a proton to, to acetic acid and you know you might ask why and it's the easy answer is because it's not in any of the tables that we use for the Ka values. Um, but a better answer is that it's just not energetically favorable for um, uh, acetic acid to react with another proton. There's not anywhere it could go in its bond structure. Uh, but I can take a uh, hydrogen away and if I take a hydrogen away it's going to form acetate and so above the molecule I don't put anything. So the proton condition is just all of the things that gained a proton in this exchange have to be equal to all the things that lost protons and so I think of it as presence you know you, you have to have a gifter or someone giving the gift and you have to have someone receiving the gift otherwise it's not a gift and the same way here so these are our um, proton gainers and these are our proton losers And then the proton condition will be my proton gainers are set equal to the proton losers. 
And for this problem, it's the same as the charge balance. So same as CB here, but that's not always the case. So don't, don't be under the impression that the charge balance is the same as the proton condition. So it's just here. Okay, so now we need to find the place on the graph where this equation is satisfied. So we're going to find on the graph where this point lies. And so the way I do this is I look at the left and right sides of the equation and I evaluate them separately on the graph. So on the left side, I'm going to follow the hydrogen ion um, line. And this is a um, log C pH diagram of acetic acid. So I could, I could write that out, log C pH diagram of HAC with the CTAC of 10 to the minus 3, which is what we started with here. Okay, and then I need to label the lines actually. So this line is the hydrogen ion line. This is hydroxide. This is acetic acid. And this is acetate. And then this value here, the crossing point, is the pKa value, which is 4.7. And to find the, the, the proton condition on the graph, I'm going to, on the left-hand side, I'm going to follow the hydrogen line directly. And then on the, on the left-hand side, I'm going to follow the dominant species as I go to the left. So to start with, I'm going to start in this corner. The hydroxide is dominant, and the acetate has a very small influence on this summation, and that's because it's a um, log scale. It's going to be slightly above the dominant species, and here I switched. So the dominant species switched from hydroxide to acetate, so then my summation line, these little arrows are the summation, just follows this, and then you get to the point where it runs into the hydrogen line, and this is the point that's satisfied by that equation. And so that tells me that this solution has a pH of about 3.9. So it's the same value that I got in the previous video using an analytical approach, but this shows you how to, to solve the pH using a graphical method.